So in this week's video, we're going to start off kind of where we left off in last week's video, and that is me making a really hard push in order to get this cover over my red rephase converter and my air compressor finished. I'm excited to get this thing done and you know, off the list. That's actually just a piece of drip edge. It should work, right? We're covered by the, the roof as well. When we put that header beam up, that's all we had, so it'll work. Not perfect. I'd like it to be a little longer. It is what it is. The roof of the shop looks pretty good. That's not good. So as far as the supports for this enclosure, you know, I'm heavily debating on whether I want to do that angled post, like I'd mentioned in previous videos, to avoid a post right on the corner that would limit my access around the building with, you know, any type of equipment. So I'm not to mention that I don't think that it's going to look all that great uh, either and be right in the way if you try to walk out the door, you know, and to the right. So uh, what I think, what I'm thinking of doing is just uh, putting another post about here. My posts won't be evenly spaced, but that doesn't matter really. You know, putting another post here, which is inboard of the corner, and then putting a brace from the corner uh, to the post to maintain my access around the building uh, and still support this end. I don't know, you know, decision's decision. I guess it's six or a half dozen. Come on, Chloe. Hi. Hi, Bubba. Hi, Chloe. Go on. Go lay down. Go on. Go on. Go on.
so this is a little different type roofing membrane. It has a layer of uh, asphalt and then a layer of a textured plastic. So, you know, I'm just using what I have left over. This is still good stuff. I just don't know the brand of it. It's definitely easier to put down, not near as, as sticky as the ice and water shield. stuff is easier to put down, that's for sure. Uh, sticky asphalt backing and a plastic uh, roughed up layer. So on our little roof out back, it is 8 feet by 16 feet, so that's 128 square feet, I think. And then each bundle of shingles will do about 33 square feet, if I remember that correctly. Uh, not long ago, if you watched, I did the roof on the shop with these exact shingles, so they'll, so they'll match. Um, so what is that, 128 square feet and then 33, so will we need four? About four, maybe five bundles. So, not a lot of shingles really to do that small roof. So Elizabeth just sent me to the store a minute ago, and I just got back. She was mad at me at the moment. Um, she said, I need you to go pick up some milk. And she said, if they have eggs, get six. I said, all right, I'll do it. So went to town, got what I needed, got home, and she said, why in the world would you get six gallons of milk? And I said, they had eggs. So back earlier in the winter when I made a video showing me putting the shingles on the actual roof of the shop, I mentioned that it was you know, important that you space your shingles correctly, and I think it's probably good to reiterate that. Now each one of my shingles, there's only five inches of each shingle that's actually exposed. 
Now you can adjust that, how much of each shingle is exposed, by a little bit, and to make sure that you end up like we have here over the full shingle at the top, you know, and just even spacing from the bottom of the roof to the top. You just measure that and you know, adjust your exposure or your shingle accordingly. Same way that I did the cedar shingle siding, you know, over the windows and under the windows. It just makes it to where you don't end up with just a little strip of shingle at the very top. It looks nice. So, well, this is getting shoved up under the drip edge there, and then it'll be nailed down the drip edge wheel where it lays flat against the roof and then sealed with some asphalt sealer. I don't expect to have any leaking issues out of this little, little lean-to roof. So now that the roof of this little structure is watertight, it's time to make make it all structurally sound and put in the last post. And I decided against the angled post off the building after a lot of thought. You know, setting this post in from the edge of the roof about three feet still allows me enough access to get around the building, and I can always clean out uh, the hillside some if I choose to in the future. But I just think it'll look better with the vertical posts. So digging this hole out, gonna fill it with concrete and do it just like the other two that I showed in last week's video. You know, just anchor it to the ground instead of anchoring it, anchor it to the concrete instead of burying the post and chipping out all these rocks that you're bound to run into when you're digging in the ground around here. So there's you a good look at the top of the roof. You know, maybe a little different angle. Got you up on the hillside. Now this uh, is only pitched 13 degrees. In roof pitch, I don't know what that is. I didn't <clears throat> worry about figuring that up because it didn't matter, actually. Um, I needed a lot of clearance here in case I want to bring equipment in to move the, the compressor out or the phase converter. I couldn't go any higher on the back with the the header because of the that's where the block stops so it's kind of a compromise with this angle really probably with a roof this shallow it probably would have been better suited for 10 because of water backing up under the shingles but where we use that ice and water shield that the sticky barrier uh, instead of tar paper this is not going to leak and if it does you know I can always fix it but I don't think that it will so still got to 
set this post and put a couple more braces in, this post is coming actually towards me about three feet, so I can still maintain decent access around the building. I didn't want this any lower, right? I didn't want to, I mean, it's already pretty low, and I'm pushing it on clearance through here, so just what I settled on. I think it'll work just fine. Looks good. So if you watched last week's video, you'll remember me pulling the drill chuck out of this drill press and inspecting the Morse taper number three socket that's up in the spindle of this thing. Now the drill chuck and arbor that I pulled out of this was in pretty bad shape. Somebody had hammered and knocked a bunch of dings and stuff on it, and then they had driven it back up in the spindle of this thing and potentially done some damage. When I felt up in the spindle, I could feel a few little spots. I mentioned that I was going to order some reamers to try to remedy that and get this spindle as close to factory condition as I can. So I did, and I got them in, both a roughing reamer and a finish reamer. Chances are we'll just use the finish reamer. So let's pull the drill chuck back out of this thing. I'll show you these reamers. They're pretty neat, and we'll try to see if we can't recondition this uh, spindle socket. So there is our finish reamer. See, there's no reliefs in it. And there's our roughing reamer, which just has a spiral relief groove around it. And it just cuts more aggressively than the finish reamer. Now we're not trying to remove a bunch of material in the spindle. In fact, we only want to remove the defects and touch as little of the original surface up inside of the socket as we can. So this is all going to be done by hand. We're going to go real slow. Let's see if we can't get a good job with this thing. So I've got the reamer and the tap handle here, I'm using quite a bit of oil on this thing. And I'm just going to put it in the spindle there. I've got this drill press in low gear. And I'm not going to turn this reamer backwards, only forwards. I can feel it. Can feel it cutting off a few high spots. Just light upward pressure, right? Just a little. Until it feels like it's cutting, or until it feels like it almost stops cutting. Until it, all the irregularities in the way that it feels when I turn it stop. I'm trying to push straight up on this thing as much as I can. And we did remove some material right around where the ring that I felt up in there was. Wow, that feels a lot better than it did. So that's it. <laughs> you buy that reamer to take off just a little bit of material. But imagine those high spots sticking out in there. And when you drive that taper up in there, basically... The only place it will touch will be the spots that are protruding from the old damaged reamer. So this will make, what I did will make this fit better. So I just got done wiping the spindle out. Got all the oil that was in there out of there. All any of the chips and stuff that was in there. And now I'm just precision stoning the arbor that's going to go up in there. These are the precision flat stones that I got from Lance Baltzy. Super nice guy. 26acremaker.com I believe if you're interested. They're Norton stones. And he does a really good job on them. 
So I'm just going to stone this off to knock any high spots off of this before I put it back up in there. stick in there. I'm just trying to line up that tang. You really don't want to run these without a tang on the back of them because if they spin and you can really gall up a spindle without that tang. That just keeps this from breaking free and spinning. Yeah, that even sounded better. So that sure makes me feel better knowing that that socket up in there is in good shape now. If, well, you can imagine if the arbor's not up in the spindle straight, it's going to run eccentric. It's going to cause you to drill slightly oversized. Now, this is not a milling machine, and we're not too worried about the, you know, the tenth on our uh, drilled holes. That's what uh, reamers are for. But you get the idea. We want this to run as good as we can. We want this to be reliable and stay up in the socket. If you have one that keeps popping out, that's a good indication that the that the socket or your arbor or both are in bad condition and you can easily fix that with a reamer. You just don't want to overdo it. But there you go. Glad to have that done. So check this out. It is a dehumidifier that I picked up for $15 used when I got this workbench and I got the hydraulic lift. Now I've been running this thing in the shop all day, about eight hours, with the doors closed, and I want to show you how much water this one unit pulled out of the air that was in the shop here. So pretty impressive, probably two liters I'm guessing, which is a lot of water. And uh, probably get another one of these to put on the other side of the shop just to help keep the humidity level down in here and keep my stuff from rusting. They're neat and they definitely work. It's a lot of water. That's good. That's good right there. Thank you, love. No, it's fine. Hold up there, please. Just, just hold it right like that. Just lay it down anywhere or set it up against the building, one or the other.
So here I'm hanging the brackets for the gutters that are going to go on this small section of roof. And what I've done is hang a bracket on each end of the roof, and from one end to the other I have an inch of drop. So I'm pulling a string between the two, making sure that that string's pulled tight, and then all the brackets, which will be on two foot centers, that go in the middle of this roof section will be just right up to that string and that way I get a nice even steady one inch drop from one end of the roof to the other. Now the brackets that these gutters came with are different than the original style. This is the same manufacturer of gutter that I used on the entire roof of the shop that I'm using on this small section and their choice to change the brackets was really nice because this went very easy. It was it's much better than the old brackets. So these are the same brand gutter that I used all around the shop, but they changed their mounting bracket, which I really like this new style. You've got a bunch of cradles brackets which I just put up, then you just set your gutter down in. It's just much easier to get your gutter at the right angle. And then the top strap that keeps the gutter from sagging out at the front just slides in and hooks in the back of the bracket, and then you just bend that tab over. I like that better. So that structure is done. Pretty much done, anyway. Looks good. And when the sun comes up again, I'll show you. Turned out really nice, I think. Nice enough, right? So that went pretty well and I would consider this done. Other than painting the post, which I'd kind of like to do, and bringing in some gravel, maybe some big flat limestone to make me a walking path through here because I like that kind of stuff and there's plenty, plenty of that around here. Now, if I had to do anything over, I probably would have went 16 inch centers on my joist spacing instead of two, but really I don't foresee any problems with this thing being able to withstand the weather that we get around here. Uh, that is 5 8 ply. Those are two by fours are treated, held up by joist hangers, screwed into this fascia, which is one by six, and they're tied in with the Simpson strong ties through the end. So I don't think it'll have any problems, but you know, I'll report if it does. I'm not a construction guy, but this went up in about three days. That's me counting a few afternoons that I worked and tying it all together into you know, days. So 
not very long really in my opinion went so well actually I'll probably do something like this in the future out in the front of the shop although a different design because I don't want the central posts and stuff so we'll see you know it'll be a while before I do something like that but for now at least my equipment is not getting directly rained on we may enclose it but you know that's all future stuff looks good I'm excited to check it off the list as done so I got another video coming out today, so watch for that. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do that, or else you may not get notifications when I post a video. I know a lot of guys only watch for my videos on Saturday morning, and if I post something during the week, you'll, you'll likely miss it. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel, that way you don't miss anything. There should be another video out today, and in fact it should be out right now, on my new machine, Reveal and Repair, that I talked about in last week's video. So search my channel click on my little guy it'll take you there and you'll see what i'm talking about so that's it for this video anyway thanks for watching thanks to my viewers patrons subscribers anybody who's supporting me that on is this adventure and that's it hopefully i can get brakes on this truck because as you can tell they're kind of smoky so that's yeah. it thanks for watching Brake caliber and i'll see you next time the birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes hold on to your dream oh i know you wanna scream since the day you're born you're just a flower on your own waiting for the sun to blossom hoping to break through the storm